God, it's all so fucking poetic and fucking plastic. But listen, shitty. man, there's one fucking thing I must tell you. When that poor fucking coyote was dying on that highway, and that poor, silly, little, beautiful cop arrived, mm. I loved him, man. He was a good cop. Yeah, that guy really was. No bad vibes off that motherfucker. Man. I swear, he looks... He looked like an Indian to me. I saw an Indian in his face. I did too, man. I, I saw him as an Indian. And you ask me why. I don't know, man. I really love Indians. You know? I got it. It's way back in my mind somewhere. But he, know, but he probably was an Indian, Indian man. Somebody well, he looked like very, you know, you had to really look at him, you know. <laughs> I did. I really looked at him. You know, the first time him. I discovered death, me, and my uh, mother and father, I'm not sure if a sister was there, whether she was alive or not, and a grandmother and a grandfather were driving through the desert at dawn, and a truckload of Indian workers had either hit another car or just, you know, I don't know what happened. But there were Indians scattered all over the highway, bleeding to death. Mm. So we p the car pulls up and stops. And it's my first reaction to death, because up to then I was just going, you know, picking seeds out of the cotton fields, going, yeah, wow. Well. How old are you? I must have been about four. Approximately. Up to then, man, my whole trip was the that locks the car door when you push the thing, and boop, you know, or you can look out the window and ooh. And uh, man, all of a sudden, these are uh, redskins, you know. I can't even remember if I'd seen a movie, man. And they're just lying all over the fucking road, bleeding to death. Man. What did they hit? They were in one of those trucks, man, and it fell over, and they were just scattered all over the fucking highway, bleeding. You didn't see what they hit? No, we came along it, you know, after it happened. So they pull the car up and they stop. And uh, I'm just a kid, you know, so I have to stay in the car with the women, you know, and the cats go back there. My father and my grandfather go back, you know, to check it out. And that was my first reaction to death. Man. And I, I don't know whether I'm crazy or what, but I had the feeling when that happened, like I didn't want to look back, like I'm just this little, like a child, it's like a flower, man. His head is just floating the breeze, man. But the reaction I get now, thinking about it, looking back, is that possibly the soul of one of those Indians, or maybe several of them, just ran over and just jumped into my fucking mm. brain. Man. I can do it. And they're still in there. Because you saw them, man. Yeah. I didn't see nothing, man. You know what I saw? I saw artificial flowers, man. I saw artificial snow. And like when the bull is getting gored, it, Imagine it if you did it like cartoon style with little streamers coming and going. No, all I saw was just, you know, like a super heavy funny, fucking, uh, uh, funny red paint and people lying around. And, oh, but I'm I'm sitting there and I know something's happening because I can dig the vibrations of the people around me, you know, who I think are very heavy because they're my parents and all that, and grandparents. Everything's real secure, and you know the uh, glove compartment. You know? 
and all of a sudden I just realized that uh, they were just little screaming, creamy creeps in the face of reality. And that they didn't know what was happening any more than I did. That was the first time I tasted fear. And like, this is a projection from a long way back, but I do think that at that moment, the souls or the ghosts of those dead Indians, maybe one or two of them, were just running around, freaking out, and just leaped into my fucking soul. And I was like, like a sponge, ready to just sit there and absorb it. Man, who knows if they didn't, man? It's, it's not a ghost story, man. It's something that really means something to me. I'm not going to cry about it. I don't feel like crying. I don't believe it. But, it, you know, it's a very tender, personal point. And now what I want to know is, where in the fuck were you hitchhiking with Brian? From Florida up the Gulf Coast through the Southwest to San Diego. So what? So it was a big adventure. <laughs> no, but you were telling me about a story about you and Brian, and you get in and this chick said something to you. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> the fucking coyote, man, his little pinky red tongue flops out of his mouth, man. That fucking coyote, man, if I saw him in a Walt Disney movie or something and he's running around grooving, i go, wow. Beautiful. And that motherfucker's lying there dying, man. There's nothing I can do, man. You know what I wanted to do was just... Part of me wanted to go up and scratch him behind the ears and say, hey, everything's cool, man. But that's a fucking coyote, man. It's not a human being. And if it was a human being, if it's dying, man, it becomes something else. Why are we obsessed with death, man? Is death beautiful or is it newer? That's what I want to know. I mean, is it, is it where it's at or is it not where it's at? What about sex? Because that sex starts it and death ends it. And if death is the beginning, then doesn't anyone know isn't there anyone alive right now that knows what's happening? What did the lady that was driving the car say to you? That's all I want to hear, man. She said, she said, so it's something like all I want. No. I want to have sexual intercourse with a human being and I want it right now. <laughs> Did you say it like that? I'm really embarrassed. Like, no. How did she say that? She was stoned out of her fucking gourd. Oh, that's right. 